Warren. and welcome everybody to the Celtic Forever podcast. We've got John here to go through the Dundee game, but we're also going to go through the massive preview of the Aberdeen semi-final at the weekend at Hamden Park. So we've got plenty to go through. Quick hello to John. How are you, John? I am all right. How are you? I'm okay. It was, it was a good midweek there, John. It was a really good midweek. You know, Rangers losing, Celtic winning. Obviously, Aberdeen are still joint top with us, but that doesn't matter. I think Rangers are out of this title race now, but anything can happen. Uh, just a wee quick mention of the competition, John, before we move on. Uh, correct score for the Celtic Aberdeen semi final. Looking for the correct score and any score in the match. One guess each into the comments to win your choice of metal wall plaque. So that's your choice. You've got the Larson one, the Lisbon Lions one, you've got the Stadium one. There's various ones there. You can take your pick. Um, we've not had a winner for three weeks. So correct score, folks. One guess each into the comments. And if, it, if there's more than one correct entry, it will have to go to a prize draw. So good luck, everybody, with that. Right, John, let's get into it then. We'll just, uh, a wee bit of, no news, but just a wee bit of information for any, anybody that wants to know. The Celtic ladies return on Sunday after a two-week absence with the international. So Celtic ladies are away to Motherwell on Sunday, John. So hopefully they can come back with a, with a victory. Um, that one's a 10 past four kickoff. It's a funny kickoff time. So MD is interested in the ladies' game. They play Motherwell on Sunday. All right, John, let's get into this game. Right away, obviously, McGregor was missing. You know, that, that was a bit of a shock for me, McGregor missing. And I think Brendan, you know, he ran the changes, didn't he? Ralston played, Yang played, Palmer played. Luke McGowan started as well, you know. Um, just a few changes, John. He sort of rested players, didn't he, for this one. I, I thought that was a bit of a surprise, you know. We can't, we can't go gambling points here. I know it was Dundee at home and we should be winning their games, but, you know, we don't want to be gambling resting half the team. Exactly. Uh, it was a big surprise to me that, seeing, especially seeing Palmer starting and uh, Yang. Like, Yang's a half-decent player, so is Palmer, but no, nah, uh, when it comes to the league, feels your st- strongest team. But I, I guess Brendan's got the treble in mind. That's why he's fielded a weak team. He wants to keep his best team for Aberdeen. And uh, well, by the looks of things, we're going to need our best team for Aberdeen anyway. Absolutely. We're going to need our best team, John, for Aberdeen. It's uh, it's maybe a blessing in disguise that he rested the players because we came out of Celtic Park with the win. Anyway, OK, it was, it, was a, it was a bit of a poor game, if you're going to be honest. You know, nothing each half time. It was uh, the fans were getting restless as well. You know, the support were getting a bit restless. At nothing each, you know, and you can understand why because we never played well at all in the first half. And um, let's go through the first half then, John. And was a it was a chance for Dundee in the first very first minute. A great save by Casper Michael. Uh, a decent shot and a, and a good save, John. Uh, Dundee pressing as early on in this one, early on in this one. And uh, if it wasn't for that fantastic save, they were one nothing up in the first minute. Aye, aye, they certainly were. But Casper stopped the shot, that's what he's there for. And Dundee fast out the traps. I think it was a minute and 15 seconds or something on the clock and they'd tested us already. But I think, that, does that know the only time they were up the park? They were very, very seldom up the park. Yeah, once we put, uh, started putting our foot in the ball, John, that was it. <laughs> yeah, it was total domination, but... It was really struggled to break them down. They had a sort of solid defence there, to be fair to Dundee. You know, they they defended really well, to be honest with you. A couple of chances third minute in the seventh minute. A shot from Kyogo saved. And then a, another Kyogo. It was uh, Kyogo went to pull he drive his shot wide. Kyogo normally buries them. So a couple of chances for Kyogo, John, in the, in the first uh, seven or eight minutes. Um, it just it seemed as it was going to be one of the days at that point. You know, it was, Couple of really good chances. You normally see Kyogo burying these shots. Well, he's missed a lot of sitters, Kyogo. That one he put past the post. I could not believe he put that past the post. I mean, that's a 10 year old kid have stuck that away. You've seriously got to be taking these chances, Xander. I mean, we've got big games coming up against Aberdeen. You can't go missing sitters like that against Aberdeen. Um, but Kyogo, he's normally okay in the big games. This is a big game. Celtic have got to go there and put Aberdeen to the sword. But Kyogo has got to be on form. He's got to finish these simple chances. He can't go and missing chances like that. 
Yeah, I can't go on missing, especially ones like that. Oh no, just to keep it to beat. You know, normally, normally you're celebrating before he even hits the shot, but you're that confident with Kyogo scoring. But you know, that was two sort of like easy chances, wasn't it? Um, okay, we'll move on. Yang had another another easy chance, another miss in the 35th minute. You know, was really struggling in the first half in this one, John. But that was a chance for Yang, and then another chance for Bernardo for about 20 yards out. He drags his shot wide as well. The forty third minute. So there's not really much to talk about in the first half, John, apart from the chances missed. It was a pretty poor showing in the first half, wasn't it? You know, um yeah, it was a poor showing, but you know, we're not losing the game, we're still in the game, and we all knew that there was going to be a different Celtic that was going to come out in the second half. Uh aye, it was a slightly better Celtic. It wasn't much better, mind you. I think think Celtic's game plan was to stretch them, do you see if they could stretch them? And because they were going from left to right an awful lot, switching the play an awful lot, try to stretch Dundee, try to tire them out. And uh, I think Dundee, they stuck to their plan well. So, all credit to them for sticking to their, their shape, because I don't think they lost, lost their shape the whole game. Yeah, no, no, they stuck to their plan, as you say, John. So the second half kicks off. And four minutes into the second half, got a shot from Parma, decent shot, decent save. I think that save is for the cameras. But a decent save, nevertheless. Uh, so we're showing some early intent in the first half. Um, and then we get this <laughs> triple miss. John, it's a triple shot effort on goal. Um, one one was saved, one was blocked by the defender, and the third one was, was hit over the bar. I think that was Kyogo hit the last one. But, you know, at, at the 50th minute point, it definitely looked as though it was going to be one of their games, especially with these three, you know, that was a really good save from the goalkeeper, the first one, then it was blocked by the defence, then the shot over the bar. One of the shots should have ended up in the back of the net. Aye, it was very reminiscent of the Aberdeen game at the end, if you remember that, from Ash in the box, that yeah. somehow Aberdeen managed to keep it out. It was it kind of reminded me of that a wee bit. But aye, somebody's got to be hitting the net there. <laughs> I mean, there wasn't that many players in front of the boss, so... It was just unfortunate for Celtic that all the players that were in front of the ball, the ball actually hit them. <laughs> yeah, that's it. You know, it's but we, we kept pounding their goal, John. We kept pounding them. We had to make some subs. We knew this was going to happen, John, didn't we? That the subs were going to have to change the game because the team that started just couldn't break them down. So Ralston came off for Johnston. Obviously, that was a big substitution. Uh, Bernardo came off for Vio Hitati and... Uh, Palmer came off for Maida, uh, and within five minutes of this subs, John, we went in front, and it's an it's a cross from Yang before he comes off. It's deflected off the Dundee defender, breaks to Alistair in the box. Alistair Johnson, lovely wee finish, lovely wee slide finish, John. Uh, not easy that, not easy, um, but he puts it into the back back of the net, and uh, the stadium goes up into raptures. You know, brilliant to go ahead. After the first 60 minutes was quite poor, John, then in the 61st minute, we go ahead. Nice finish for Alistair Johnson yet again. Aye, three goals in five matches or something like that, with whatever it is. Aye, he's doing well, Alistair. Playing out his skin, love Alistair Johnson. But uh, it doesn't, I don't think it bodes well for us that if we put player kind of fringe players, bench players, if you like, we always struggle, Xander. Always struggle. And it looks like we're having to rely on the first team players to get us through games. I mean, that's blatantly obvious. When Brendan changes it up, we struggle and we struggle bad. So, yeah. There you go. That's, that's my take on it. We're struggling a lot when we, when he's playing these uh, bench players. So, we definitely need to make signings uh, come January. We've got to strengthen that bench. Yeah. I think you're. Ralston's, your Yang's, your Palmer's, John, even we Greg Taylor. You know, I know he's just came back from an inj- injury, so we'll, we'll, we'll spare him. But the rest of these guys that started, John, you know, they've got to do better. They've got to do better, to be honest with you. I know they're trying their hardest, and, you know, it's no easy breaking down 11 men behind the ball, but uh, for me, they've got to do better. Um, and another thing, John, this Awata, John, the sale of Awata, that's coming back to bite us, I think. You know, Callum's been missing the last few games. Albeit we've got the we've scraped through the results, you know, we've got the results, you know, scraping through against Dundee, you're struggling against Motherwell for half the game as well. Um, 
We're still getting the results. But I think with a water in there, John, a central defensive midfielder, you know, it would have gave us just more options, I think. Aye, I was thinking about a water, the what was the game we played before Dundee Motherwell? When Callum oh, okay. was missing. I was I was I was thinking, why did we sell a water a water? A great player like that just sold like it was nothing to Celtic. He's a top player, a water. I don't care what anybody says. He just never got his chance. And uh, selling him, a huge, huge error for me, that one. Aye, aye, we're missing him. I would love to have seen him come on against Dundee. Yeah, he's he, uh, he's, he's flying down in England. He's really, really doing well down there, John. Uh, Birmingham, isn't it? Anyway, anyway, John, let's move on. Let's wrap up this Dundee game because we've got the Aberdeen game, the big preview to go. So, uh, Yan came off then after the goal for Forrest, so he done his wee bit, I suppose. He would have deflected cross straight to Alistair Johnson to put his one nothing up. So Forrest comes on, John. Um, we'll get to the one to ten individual scorings very soon, John. Um, but we get a second goal anyway, John, within three minutes of Yang coming off, and it's a penalty kick into it. Uh, goal filled in the box. Uh, Stonewaller for me, absolute Stonewaller. Um, yeah, it's, it had to go to VAR, but, you know, I think all penalty, you know, shouts have to go to VAR, does not it? But anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, it goes to VAR, we get the penalty. And he, he buries it, Engels, doesn't he? He buries it, buries it nicely. It's a nice finish from Engels. Very composed. He's good at these penalties. I've got to admit, that's three scored, I think. Uh, puts us 2 nothing up, John. And all eyes, after that second goal, I'd have, I'll would have diverted to Pataudry, they? because, you know, everybody wants to know what's going on over there. But that's the game put to bed in the sixth to sixth minute. Uh, nice penalty from Engels. Aye, he's become the penalty expert, isn't he? Engels. Um, I want to see Engels scoring goals for open play, though. That's what I want to see. Mm-hmm. Because he's been really, he's been really unlucky for open play, hitting the post and bars and stuff like that. He's got a fierce shot on him as well. So aye, he'll come good eventually. I'm sure of that, Sander. Um, ah, he's good at top the penalties away, isn't he? Very good. He's lots of composure there with the penalties. As you say, it would be nice to see him getting a goal or two from open play. That will come eventually, but um, yeah, John, we'll wrap it up there, John, for that, because that's uh, 2 nothing one. We'll talk about the Aberdeen game on Rivals Corner, Aberdeen Rangers. We'll talk about that in Rivals Corner, so we'll not touch on that just now. But uh, just the usual then, John, 1-10 individual scoring. Michael 7. I'm trying to remember the team. Carter Vickers, um, seven. Liam's, no, Liam Scales, uh, Trusty. I thought he was good. I'll give him an eight. Mm-hmm. Uh, Anthony Ralston, four. I thought he was very poor. Greg Taylor, six. Uh, who else was there? Centre of the park, uh, Luke McCowan. A decent game, six and a half. Half decent game. I'm struggling to remember the team now. I think it was Bernardo, was it holding, wasn't he? Aye, aye, Bernardo, aye. Uh, six for Bernardo. And who was the other one? Was it Hitati? Yeah, Hitati started, remember. John, yeah. yeah. Hitati, aye. I don't know, I can't remember, but he did. <laughs> I'll give him a five, because I can't remember. Uh, and up front, Kyogo, I thought he was really poor. Zander gave him a three. And I'm being kind. You miss a chance like that. And a couple of chances like that. Uh, that gives me the fear. Seeing, seeing that a 10 year old could have put that away, like I said earlier. He gets a three for me. Right. Um, who started doing the right? Was it Nicholas Kuhn? No, we had, we had uh, Palmer and Yang, John. Oh, Yang and Palmer. So it was. Sorry, Xander, I totally forgot who started. Uh, Palmer never did that much to impress. Try to do his usual tricks and flicks. I remember all that stuff and I was getting really angry at him. Instead of whipping it in, he's trying tricks and flicks and stuff. Uh, but it was okay, I suppose. Gave him a five and a half. Lewis Palmer, four. Did nothing. Had a shot and did nothing else. Yeah. Uh, that is quite fair scores, John. Um, I'll quickly run through mine, right? Uh Goalkeeper for his save, I'll give him six and a half at the very start. But apart from that, he didn't have much to do, apart from goal kicks, etc. 
Trusty and Cattle Vickers, I'll give both of them a seven. Um, Taylor, a six. Alistair, Alistair Johnson had to come on, but before that, it was Ralston, wasn't it? So we'll give him a four. Bernardo, a five. Uh, Hitati, a six. Uh, Luke McCowan, a seven. I thought he was decent as well, John, actually. Look, yeah, I thought he played well again. Uh, on the wings, we had Palmer. I'll give him a five. Uh, Yang, a six, because he's contribution for the goal. And Kyogo, a five. So, yeah, just the same. We quick word on the the subs, John, that made the difference. Alistair Johnston came on. Arnie Engels came on. Um, who else came on? I can't even remember now. Uh, Arnie Engels. Who else was it came on? I can't even remember, John, who came on. Uh, but what are you thinking, John, for the two that made the, the difference, Engels and uh, Alistair Johnson? Be quick score for them. Uh, I can't remember. Alistair Johnson is always, you know, he's a fantastic player and he's deserving of a captain's armband. Mm-hmm. But I, I think he was superb, Alistair Johnson. Even he was on a short time, I'll give him a seven. Engels. Sorry, John. I, sorry, John. I think it was Engels that started actually, and Rio came on. Came on for Engels. I'm sure of that. I'm, I know it's about four days ago, but um, I think it was Engels that started, and Hitati came on for Engels. I'm sure that's what happened. I am struggling to remember the game, Xander. I'm totally struggling to remember it. I just, yeah. I'll, I'll tell you, I'll tell you why actually, because I was switching back and forward between Celtic Park and Pataudry, To be honest with you, yeah, I think the <laughs> it's why game you ought to forget about as well, isn't it? You know, it really was quite poor. As I said on the preview, John, it was all about the three points. That was the most important thing, three points. And then we came away with the three points. After you get the three points, the game's out your mind, isn't it? So, uh, yeah, a quick score for Ingles anyway, John. Can't remember. <laughs> Honestly, can't remember. I'll give him a five because I can't remember. I took his penalty, well, five and a half. Yeah, okay. All right, John. All right, okay, that wraps up the game. Just need a man in the match. You know, I know Alistair Johnson won the official man in the match, but he only played... Um, 35 minutes, 40 minutes maybe, John. So, uh, who was your man in the match? Can I remember? Uh, like I said, I was switching back and forth. But what I will do is what I've seen in the game, the one that stuck out for me most was uh, Austin Trusty, Xander. I'm going to give the man, in, the man of the match to Austin Trusty. Austin Trusty, man of the match, the big defender. He's playing well, isn't he? You know, that's a bit of a dilemma. We'll talk about it in the Aberdeen game. The build up to that. Uh, man in the match, it's a struggle, isn't it? You know, it's hard to find a man in the match when the full team plays so, no poorly, but, you know, very lackluster, you know, because of all the changes. So I'll give it to Alistair for his goal uh, and his, you know, his energy when he came on as well. He changed, sort of changed the game, didn't he? So, okay, that wraps that up, John. Um, okay, the massive preview Celtic against Aberdeen in the semi final, John. This is. Massive for us, you know, it's um, obviously a major part of the treble. We want to try and get to the final to give us a chance of winning a yet another treble. But in our way as Aberdeen, John, you know, we can have asked for any tougher semi-final. You know, we could have got Motherwell, but no, that goes to the other side of Glasgow. We get Aberdeen, you know, the, the best form they've been in in decades, you know, maybe even since the 80s. So, uh, John, we've got Aberdeen in the semi-final. Um, all the big players will return. Kuhn will return. You know, Ida will return, John. He's uh, He's got his scan. Everything's okay. So that's good news that big Ida's okay. And uh, Callum McGregor will return, John. So three of the mainstays will return. And I don't think he's going to arrest any players. So we're looking like we're going to have a full squad for this one. Going to need a full squad for this one. Uh, by by the way, uh, Liam Scales came on and I thought he played well, by the way. I remember that. Look uh, back, Liam Scales. Uh, yeah. I anyway, we've passed that game. Aberdeen on Saturday. What, what time's the kick off? Five thirty or something like that. Yeah, it's past late five. Kick, yeah, late kick off five thirty, John. Um, on Premier Sports. Aye, aye, this this is a big game, isn't it? This is a big big game. Look, like, the League Cup never means anything to me unless it's part of a treble. Now we're in the semi final. I'd love Celtic to get into the final. Uh, but I wouldn't be too disappointed if, if we win over because it's the League Cup. Gets you nothing, but it's always good to win a cup. Now, I do love it when we win the League Cup, but uh, we've got a huge, huge obstacle standing in our way in, in the form of Aberdeen. 
Now, I was watching a lot of their game the other night. They're, they're a good team, Xander. They're a solid team. All right, they were only playing Rangers, so maybe that doesn't go for much. But we should yeah. have put them to bed at Celtic Park. We had the chances to put them to bed. We were 2-0 up. Rested on our laurels, kind of took our foot off the gas a bit. And by the time we realised it was too late, Aberdeen had scored two goals and uh, and then we started pounding their goal. Now, if we put in that kind of performance from start to finish, I've no doubt Celtic will wipe the floor with Aberdeen. But it's got to be that performance, start to finish, Sander. You've really got to go at them and punish them in that big, heavy park, which is Hamden. Horrible place to go, Sander, and play, but a great place if you get the win. Massive game. Yeah, that's. Um, and by the way, winning the League Cup doesn't always bring you success. Just look at uh, Clement, you know, winning it last season. Look where he is now. Okay, let's get back on to the preview. As I say, John, it's good to have the boys back. Uh, Big Adam either, John. Uh, the injury not as serious as we all thought at the start. Still a terrible tackle, but the big man, he's he's up for um, he he he's up for uh, to be picked for this one. You know, ahead of Kyogo. Um, because you you know look at the settles he missed against Dundee. Um, do you think do you think there's a chance Big Adam Eder's going to start ahead of Kyogo? Kyogo against Aberdeen, he can terrorise them. He's got the pace to close them down and all that. Something which Adam doesn't have. But Adam Eder has got a better finish on him than Kyogo. I think in the box. I mean, mm-hmm. he's a better predator in the box than Kyogo is. Kyogo misses far too many sitters for my line, but Kyogo is a big game player. He can score some fantastic goals from outside the box in these big games, as we're seeing against Rangers, etc. But uh, for me, I think I would start with Aberdeen, big physical team. You might need big Adam either for that one, or you might need the prowess of Kyogo's speed to combat them and close them down. I don't know, it's a tricky one, Zander. Yeah, it's a, it's, it's a tricky one. I think it'll be a Kyogo, to be honest, yeah, um, because he loves Hamden, didn't he? You know, the goals against Hibs, goals in finals, semi-finals. Um, but the big man, he's up for, he's, he's, he's available for selection anyway, big Adam Eder. Um, we'll, we'll run through our predicted lineup in a wee minute, John. But nine out of the last ten meetings, you know, we've obviously beat Aberdeen. So, um, OK, the last time out was a draw, as you say, John, two each at Celtic Park. But we did play them last year in the semi-final of the Scottish Cup, John, and uh, we beat them in penalties. So, you know, even Aberdeen last season were showing, you know, a bit more intent, you know, because it was a bit of a struggle beating them in the semi-final last year, if you remember correctly. So, um, they've just went from strength to strength, to strength Aberdeen, by the looks of things, John, and, um, you know, it's not going to be any, any easier this time. It's going to be very tough. I was listening to Aberdeen fans uh, after the game. They're sounding very cocky about everything. Bring it on and all that. Bring on the Celtic. Nobody's going to stop us and all that. But uh, I, you don't. One thing you don't want to be doing is getting too cocky about it, you know, because uh, it's Celtic. They're playing Celtic. Are no mugs. Celtic can turn up and comfortably beat Aberdeen if they play at their best. Celtic can comfortably beat them, and I'm talking three, four, nothing. So, no, nah, you can never get too cocky about these things, Sander. But it's still, it's a massive game for both teams. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's one I'm really looking forward to, John. It's, um, you know, uh, we're going to go to any tougher. You know, even if it was Rangers, it wouldn't, wouldn't be as tough as this. So, you know, as you say, the fans are up for it, the players are up for it, the manager is up for it as well. Um, but looking at the form, you know, the form is with Celtic. Into, uh, and even the bookmakers think, the forms with Celtic because Celtic are priced at two to nine for the win, five to one the draw, and ninety one for an Aberdeen win. You know, I think I find that quite surprising, John. Ninety one Aberdeen. Aye, it is surprising because they are a, a good team. They are they, they battle for everything. I know they battle for everything against Rangers anyway, but they always have done. They, they always have battled against Rangers. That's one of the reasons I, I quite like Aberdeen as a team. I don't like them on. The days we're playing them, of course, but uh, they are a hard fighting team. And and Jimmy Thielen, is that his name? Jimmy Thielen, isn't it? Something yeah. like that. Yeah, Thielen, yeah. He's going to have that Aberdeen, Aberdeen team battling the same way they did against Rangers. They're going to fight for everything. But 
I'm sure Brendan's got a wee plan up his sleeve. He knows how to win these big games. So, uh, I, I, I just don't think Aberdeen should be getting too cocky. But they've they've every right to be happy. You know, the, the Aberdeen fans have every right to be happy because their team's playing brilliant. I think. Yeah, they're playing superb. It's, it's a bit of a surprise, isn't it? Aberdeen has showed up this season. You know, um, how long can it last? That's the question. You know, how long can it last? You know, if they if they get put out the cup, you know, how, how will that you know affect them? Uh, if they win against Celtic, how will that affect them? You know, you know, it's interesting. But it's all about Celtic for us, John. It's all about us. Um, as I say, John, the games in Premier Sports kick off at half past five. Uh, Clancy, he's the referee for this one, and Dallas is on the VAR. Um, so the lineup for this one, then, John, as I say, possibly we've got a full squad to pick from. Um, hopefully that's the case, John. What's your predicted lineup? Full steam ahead, full team. Casper Schmeichel. I don't, this is a tricky one at the back, isn't it? Is it going to be trusty or scales that starts on the left hand side of defence? I think Carl Vickers is a dead cert to start. Brendan loves him. But I think it's going to be Vickers and Scales. And it's going to be Taylor and Johnson. Centre of the park, it's going to be McGregor, Hatate and Engels. Maida up front beside Kyogo and what's his name? Nicholas Kuhn. Mm, yeah, yeah, it's it's a strong team, isn't it? It really is strong. Uh, and I'm more or less the same. I'll quickly run through it anyway. Uh, Casper, uh, Scales, Carl Vickers, uh, Alex Valet, uh, Johnston, Callum McGregor, Leo Hitati, Arnie Ingalls, uh, Kuhn, Kyogo, and uh, Dyson. So it's very strong, John, isn't it? It's very strong. And then we've got that extra bit of strength on the bench as well with Big Adamida, etc. John um, Bernardo. You know all the all the regulars that are normally on the bench, but John, I agree with you. I think we need to strengthen, especially in that midfield area in January, um, especially with the Champions League games uh, running into January as well. I know we're going off track slightly, John, but I do agree with you. I think we need to strengthen in the midfield. Definitely, I, I, but they need they still need a couple of players. Still need a couple, and. Uh... Maybe the possibility of looking at getting a new striker in as well. Yeah, because Wills had the three strikers, John, didn't we? We had O, uh, Ida and Kyogo, so we sold O, but we've not replaced them. We've not got a third striker, so I agree with you, John. I think we need a third striker, uh, you know, just as cover, especially. You know, we, I know we've got Dyson in there as cover that he can play up front, but uh, it'd be nice to see a third striker there. Uh, and a third striker would also push the two strikers we've got as well. You know, because um, Kyogo is missing a lot of chances just now, John. I know he saves his best to the big games, and Saturday is a big game, obviously. So, um, yeah, we'll wait and see what happens in January. We can only wait and see. Um, right, John, score prediction time then, John. This is going to be interesting. What are you thinking? Uh, it is interesting, I. And by the way, Alistair Johnson scored the same same amount of goals as Kyogo, and he's a right back. That says it all. Um I'm not saying Kyogo's a bad player. He just needs to uh, work on his finishing in front of goal. He's a great wee player. He's great at closing down and all that. He can pick a pass, etc., etc. But his finishing in front of goal is quite poor right now. He needs to really work on that, I think. But uh, no, I'm sure he'll come better uh, as the season goes on, Xander. Yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah, he's just a brilliant wee player, isn't he, Kyogo? Um, just needs to find his shooting boots. That's all it is. <laughs> That's all it is. Very wasteful at the moment. But, John, I'm sure when it comes to Saturday and that you know big game atmosphere, the wee man will be up there firing uh, Celtic into the final. Um, uh, predicted score for me, what am I thinking? I, I don't know, John. This is... I, I think we'll come into this one with a convincing one, John. I think we've learned a lesson from last week's game at Celtic Park and I think we'll come into this one 3-0. Nah, I can't see it. Can't see it. But I hope you're right. <laughs> of course, I hope you're right. I hope and pray that you're right. I'd love to see Celtic just turn them over and put them back in their place, really, to be honest with you. Um, I'm thinking... I'm going to say 3-2, Xander. Celtic, of course. 
goals, goals, goals. That what you're looking at, John? Michael Moles. <laughs> I make a most scored goals, didn't he? <laughs> they had a song about that, didn't they? Uh, yeah, John. Uh, Aye, you know. how, bad, how bad was that, by the way? He gets the ball and he scores a goal. That's quite poor, isn't it? That's what they say. He gets the <laughs> ball and he scores a goal. Michael, Michael, most. <laughs> oh, dear. Um, that was quite poor. Michael, most. I. Um, Poor song, uh, poor player. Yeah, we're going to get the rivals corner, John, very, very shortly. Uh, but that, that wraps up the big preview of the the Dons game on Saturday, John. Good luck to Celtic. You know, just go out there, do a professional job. I'm sure we'll be okay. Uh, but it's it's not going to be easy. Even though I've said I think it's going to be three nothing, that doesn't mean to say it's going to be easy. You know, John, uh, it could be nothing each at half time, and then we score three late goals. You know, anything can happen in this one. Uh, but Aberdeen are definitely going to give us a game. So good luck to Celtic. You know, all the best of luck to the boys. We're going to have a full team out there, full strength squad. So uh, no excuses, John. There's no injuries for Celtic. There's no no injuries for Aberdeen either. So uh, it just makes for for a classic game. It certainly does. And Celtic have got the luxury they were able to rest a lot of the top players. So. Aberdeen put a lot of effort into that game against Rangers, so maybe a wee bit of tiredness might creep into them, Xander. We don't know yet. We'll wait and see, but right now I think they are just pumped with adrenaline. Aberdeen, they are gung-ho right now. Uh, and that winning is breeding a lot of confidence. Yeah, sure it's John. Uh, a lot of confidence. Um, and I'll make continue, that's all I can say. Uh, Alright, okay, John, that wraps it up. I've still got quite a bit to go through. Uh, Obviously, we've got rivals calling to go through. We've got comments to go through. Um, but the weekend's fixtures, John, in the league, we'll just quickly run through that. St. Johnson Hearts, we prediction after you? Uh, one now is St. Johnson. Okay, one now is St. Johnson. I'll say, uh, yeah, Hearts are struggling, aren't they? A draw, one each. Uh, St. Mirren, Ross County. <sighs> Tough game, isn't it? That one. I'm going to say 2 1 St. Mirren. 2 1 St. Mirren. I'll say it's, it's tough, you know, with these sort of, you know, smaller teams, but I'll say yes. Uh, 2 0 St. Mirren. Yeah, 2 0. I'll go for St. Mirren as, as well, John. Uh, on, on Sunday, we've got Dundee and Kamarnock. Oh, hopefully, we've just had a look at Dundee. Didn't look that great, to be honest with you. But it's at home, so I'm going to say a home win. 1-0 Dundee. Okay, I'll say, yeah, it's, they're quite strong Dundee in defence, isn't they? Kamarnock are good as well. It's just tough, it's tough. 2-1 uh, uh, Kamarnock, yeah, a way win for me there, John. And finally, in the league, we've got Hibs and Dundee United on Sunday as well, John. What are you thinking? I'm going to say 2-1 Dundee United. Yeah, 2-0 Dundee United, John. Yeah, I think Hibs are struggling, aren't they? They really are. They're yeah, bottom of the league, Hibs. So, uh, yeah, OK, that wraps it up. That's your league fixtures for the weekend. Obviously, the rest of the, the fixtures are in the cup. So, a uh, wee quick word on Burundi Watch, John. Be quick words uh, after their win uh, last weekend. You know, Air United, Scott Brown's Air United won in last week against Airdrie. They, they've got an away tie this week, John, against Rafe Rovers. In fact, that's tonight, John. That game's on tonight, if you can catch it anywhere um, on on your fire stick, John. Rafe Rovers against Air United, that's tonight. That's one I'm going to try and look for because, uh, you know, another one for Scott Brown. He'll be right back up there again, John. We know that uh, the last few weeks uh, he struggled a wee bit. So, yeah, keep your eye on that one, folks. Rafe Rovers against Air United tonight. Scott Brown, uh, well, We'll keep a wee eye on that. Um, other games, John, to look out for Celtic B against Cowden Beath on Saturday. I didn't know Cowden Beath were in the Lowland League, John. I thought Cowden Beath were part of the you know the main leagues in Scotland, maybe the second division. So I didn't know they'd drop down. So Celtic B against Cowden Beath on Saturday. And just a wee quick touch on our um next game in the Champions League, Leipzig, John. They they won 4-2 in midweek against St. Pauli in the Cup, so a win for Leipzig. And this weekend, John, on Saturday, they're up against Borussia Dortmund away from home. That'll be an interesting one. Aye. Uh, 
don't know, wait and see what happens. I, I kind of I kind of hoping for a Dortmund win there, win there, to be honest with you. Cowden Beath, by the way, what a horrible name that is, isn't it? Yeah, I remember Cowden Beath always been in the leagues, John. I didn't know they'd drop down. Uh, obviously, they have, you know, so there must be a, a team that's struggling, you know, like some other teams in Scotland. We're going to get to that in a minute. Uh, Aye, but, 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 the, but the name, would you think of the name Cowden Beath? Do you think that's one of the worst names for a town you've ever heard? Cowden is it the worst? Is it the worst name for a town in Scotland? Cowden Beath, it's horrible. <laughs> I mean, it's a town in um, something Fife, isn't it? I think Cowden Beath, I'm not too sure. Um, no offence to anybody from Cowden Beath, by the way, but I've never been in there myself either. Actually, I've never been up Cowden Beath. Uh, but if you want to see Celtic um, playing them, uh, they play on Saturday uh, in Glasgow. So, uh, yeah, yeah, it's a funny name, isn't it? Cowden Beath. Um, Cowden Beast. I've got nothing against anybody for Cowden Beast, by the way. I don't think I've ever been there, but uh, it's just a horrible name, Cowden Beast. I just I've always thought that when I've heard that. It's a, what a horrible name. Let us know what you think the worst name for a town is in Scotland. I think Cowden Beast has got to top it, Xander. Cowden Beast. Um, I don't know. I don't know. It doesn't bother me too much. <laughs> but how, um, how, do you, how do you come up with a name like Cowden Beast when, you know, the first building houses on it? We're going to call this Cowden Beast. How did that come about? No idea. Who cares? But it's just no, a horrible name. I don't know, John. I don't know. Um, yeah. Uh, but as you say, John, Dortmund, Leipzig on Saturday. I'm, I'm looking for a Dortmund win as well, actually. You want Leipzig to be on, on as low as a morale as possible. Even a heavy defeat for Leipzig, John. But they're a decent team, Leipzig. Um, we don't want to go too much into it just now because we're going to talk about that when the game uh, comes closer. Uh, the fifth, isn't it? The fifth of November. We play them. Is that next Tuesday? So we'll talk about that a wee bit more uh, nearer the time. There's bigger games to come before that. Um, okay, John. Rivals corner. Um, let's get into this. This is interesting to say the least. We'll start with our closest rivals, Aberdeen, first uh, against Rangers at midweek. There, John. The same time we were playing Dundee. I think. You know, I think Rangers were very, very lucky if I'm going to be honest with you, you know, Aberdeen missing the penalty. I mean, I don't know if you saw this or no, John, this penalty miss, um, dreadful, absolutely dreadful. It was like, it was like a pass back to the goalkeeper um, right into Butland's hands. He didn't even need to move, John. So uh, I think Rangers can count themselves lucky that, you know, it wasn't a heavier defeat. Aye, aye, that's what I was thinking. Uh, to be honest with you, I watched most of that game. Uh, it just seemed like I was switching back and forward, but uh, I was wa mostly watching that game because of the, what was involved in it. I was hoping for a draw, to be honest with you. I was I was hoping for a draw, just so we could put some daylight between us and Aberdeen and remain eight points clear of Rangers. But look, I think Rangers, uh, they, they, they battled quite hard. They made a game, to be honest with you. They had a goal chopped up, chopped up as well, remember? Um. But I, it was a great game, to be honest with you. It was a cracking game. Aberdeen, of course, the, you know, the kind of battered Rangers a wee bit. But aye, aye, it's uh, what we're we talking about. I can't even remember why we're talking about this. The penalty miss, John, the penalty miss for Aberdeen. Oh, aye, the penalty miss. Aye, Jamie McGrath, uh, straight to the keeper. Aye, there was, uh, I think you had a video up of your wee grandson saving a penalty not that long ago. And that that wee boy could have saved that as well, Xander. It was that poor. It was pathetic. Honestly, a five year old could have saved that. It was yeah, just the, the worst penalty I've ever seen. It was it was dreadful. It was dreadful because obviously this penalty happened at half time, so I'd switched over as well. To be honest, we had switched over to see what was happening. And Aberdeen got the penalty, and it was a he couldn't even call it a miss. It was a pass back. So, uh, but the manager, John, as you say, Thielen, he's he's flying it. He's doing well. He's got Aberdeen at the top of the league with Celtic. He's in the semi final with the cup. You know, he's, he seems like a decent manager. This boy, ah, he's doing a great job, Fant fantastic job. Uh, like you said earlier, I think Aberdeen are at their best since the eighties. So far, anyway, I mean, it's only ten games into the season. I know they shouldn't be getting too carried away because Hearts had a similar start to the season a few years ago. And they fell away as well. But uh, I can't see Rangers catching Aberdeen, Sander. 
and that bodes well for us as well because they'll not catch Celtic either. Yeah, we were done them actually since we're in Rivals Corner. John, nine points behind Celtic and Aberdeen. Uh, they've got Motherwell up next, so they've got a wee bit of you know leeway with Motherwell because they, they should win that. You know, I'm not saying they will win it, but they should win it. You know, they couldn't have asked for an, an easier semi final to be honest with you. So that's a wee chance for them to you know bounce back against Motherwell, but you know, they really are struggling. You know, nine points behind Celtic and Aberdeen. Uh, it's just a pity that it's not another league game, game John, because, you know, how long can this guy, Clement, last? You know, I think the board are sticking by him. I think they've got to stick by him because of no money. And that brings us on to, you know, the financial results, John, the loss of over £17 million. Pounds. I keep it coming. It's a pity it's no £60 million. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't matter how many million it is, John will get away with it. So, <laughs> it doesn't matter how many million it is they're in debt, you know, it, it doesn't matter when it comes to them. But yeah, John, the financial results are shocking, to be honest with you. You know, that's them trying to keep up with Celtic. You know, I, 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 think, it, I think it's ridiculous that they've got themselves in that situation again after what happened 12 years ago. You know, administration, liquidation, still the same club. John, it uh, looks as though it's going to happen again. Um, especially if these results don't improve, and uh, and that's what we're hoping for, John. We're hoping these results don't improve. Well, you you were saying earlier that Motherwell's maybe a bit of a dig out for them. I don't think it's a dig out for them. I think uh, I think Motherwell could take them, Zander. I think Motherwell's a half decent team. So I don't think it's a dig out at all. I think that's going to be a a pretty close game. That one. I think Motherwell's going to take them. We never did that in a score predictor, by the way. Rangers against Motherwell. I'm yeah. going to say uh, 2 1 Motherwell. 2 1 Motherwell, okay. Um, and before I give you my prediction, John, um, they've no sold out Hamden. Hamden's going to be half empty, so uh, they really are in a bad way. And it's just, you know, it's music to every Celtic supporter's ears that, isn't it? So. Uh, half, half half empty stadium. They should be selling these tickets to Motherwell. <laughs> so, um, but uh, yeah, two one. You're saying, John? Oh, I can't see Motherwell beating them. To be honest, with you. Um, but they're in a bit of a mess. Uh, I'll give them a I'll give them a one nothing. You know the usual. You know, dragged over the line. One nothing. One at Hamden to get them into the semi final. Hopefully against Celtic, John. Hopefully, um, obviously a game a lot tougher you know, than what they've got to face in the semi. But, John, as you say, anything can happen. Motherwell, they should be up for it, you know, you know, they should be up for it, but with it being a semi-final, John. So uh, anything can happen, John, but um, that wraps it up for Rivals Corner, John. That's that's it. You know, Aberdeen flying, Rangers struggling. Uh, financial results, you know, terrible for, for Rangers. Um, we just want to see more of the same. Aye, keep it coming, aye. Um, toenails, all that stuff. That was good, wasn't it? Clement going on about toenails. <laughs> yeah, he's he's under pressure, severe pressure, John. Um, yeah, that was funny. I, I put the, the video on uh, YouTube and Facebook. Yeah, it's plenty of views, plenty of views. So lots of people have already watched that hilarious stuff. Um, okay, one more mention the competition. Um, correct score, Celtic Aberdeen. One guess each into the comments. We're looking for a goal scorer in the match as well, any scorer. So get your guesses into the comments, folks. Uh, if there's more than one correct entry, it will have to go to a draw. But we've not had a winner in over three weeks, so that will be very unlikely. So good luck, everybody, with the competition. Um, what else do I need to add, John, about the competition? Yeah, the prize. Any metal wall pla plaque of your choice, John. Any metal wall plaque of your choice. Got them all lying there. Celtic Park, Celtic Ladies, Henry Larson. Uh, they're all there, John. They're all there. All, all the frames and the metal plaques are there. So you can take your pick if you're the winner. Um, so good luck, everybody, with that. Um, right, John, it's comments time. We missed out the comments in the last podcast. So I know there's lots and lots of them. So a wee bit of work for you here, I'm afraid. Oh, well, that's what it is. But uh, I was just laughing at Big Clement going on about toenails and all that stuff. He's just, he's becoming a, a joke, isn't he, Clement? He's becoming a, la a laughable figure. He always has been a laughable figure, but the more he's going on and on in this Rangers job, 
the mere laughs he's given at Celtic fans, I think. Yeah, I think he, I think he thought that you know bringing in his players, his style of player, you know, because he's done a, quite a bit of a clear out there at Rangers. You got to remember John, you know, Kent Morelos, um, Ryan Jack, you know, all their mainstays. You know, he got rid of a lot of them, every one of them, John. Um, but there's more than that. I just can't remember who they are, but um, and he's brought in these sort of a younger players, John, and, and they're just struggling. You know, they're really they're just struggling. So. Um, as I say, long may it continue. He spent a lot of money as well, John, on that squad, um, Clement. So, um, as I keep saying it, long may it continue, John. Long may it continue. Aye. Aye, exactly. I bring on another rebuild. Yeah, That's right. next season, Aye. FC. Aye. Next season, FC. Let's have another rebuild football club, 2012. Aye. I keep it coming. Keep keep the bad days coming for them. Um because, like like we always said, uh, yeah, the amount of torture we had to endure after their fans when they were winning, you know. Um, aye, it's payback time, and just and I think, John, I think if, if, if yeah, sorry, John, if if Motherwell do beat them, they're in dire dire stick. Aye, um, we'll wait and see. We need to wait till Sunday to see that one, of course. Uh, thankfully, we get to play first when the pitch is good because uh, that Hamden pitch is terrible on it. But I, Motherwell was going to give them a game. They'll no doubt to make up the numbers. They'll smell a wounded animal. And I think Motherwell will be going for this, Sander. Mm, yeah, yeah, it makes it for a good weekend, isn't it? Uh, Semi final weekend, folks. So, um, but I, I, to be honest with you, John, I couldn't care less what happens over there because if it's Rangers in the final, we'll take care of them, not a problem. I would certainly hope so, aye. Um, but anyway, let's go on with the comments. Sunday will come when it comes. Uh, I'm more interested in what happens on Saturday, putting Aberdeen back in their place. Um, we can only yeah. hope and pray for that. Anyway, let's go on with the comments. And Paul McHugh was first up. He just says, afternoon, hail, hail the Celtic and the Celtic women are well. Uh, thanks for that, Paul. Cheers, Paul. Uh, next up was one club since 1888. He says, Gordon's tackle is something out of the dark ages, never a footballer. No, of course he's not. Um, I don't know if this came out about suspension or anything like that, John. I've not looked into it. <clears throat> um, um, but the guy was a sub anyway, wasn't he? So, um, as you say, it's just a guy with no talent. So, it should be a three-match ban, John, but I, I have not looked into it, so I can't really comment any further on that. No. I I don't know. I've no I've no seen anything about that. But he's looking at at least a two match span for that. That's that was brutal. But I anyway moving on. Thanks for that one club. Um, Thanks, Paul. And next, what's this? Bundle of fun was up next. It's a strange username in it. Bundle of fun. I like it. He says uh, he or she says Alistair Johnson. I always have felt after hearing his first two interviews that the guy would make a good captain in the making. Well, we've spoken about that before. Alistair Johnson is captain, Zander. I'm all for that. When Cal Mack retires. Oh, aye. Yeah, I think Alistair's um, number one choice for captain when Cal Mack um, is either suspended, injured, or if he's retired, John, I think Alistair Johnson will be the number one uh, choice for Brendan Rodgers, if he's still there. Aye, I think he will still be there. I think he'll be there for a few years yet, Alistair. Carter Vickers, of course, he takes the cap captain's armband when uh, Carl Max no playing. Mm, yeah, he does. Yeah, there's a few potential captains in there, John. There'll be uh, Big Cameron, Liam as well. He could potentially be a captain. You know, there's a few in there. Uh, even Greg Taylor. You know. Um, so yeah, there's a few. But I think I think that uh, Alistair will be the number one pick if uh, Carl Max is not available. Aye, definitely, definitely. I'm all for that. Alistair Johnson is Celtic captain. He's got the fighting spirit. He knows what it is to play for Celtic. He knows what it means to the team, the fans, the manager. He knows everything. Aye, I'm all for him being the future captain. Yeah, and just one more thing, John. Uh, Lumbo, <laughs> again. Uh, Liam Gordon's had a two-match suspension, John. So that's what we said. One to two matches you'll get. Aye, well, he deserves more than that. Anyway. Yeah. He's no facing Rangers then, so 
that's a that's a get out for them, isn't it? Yeah, that's it. Definitely. Do you think he would put a tackle like that in on a Rangers player? I highly doubt it. I highly doubt it. I know, John. You know, uh, uh, we've mentioned enough about that clown. To be honest with you, John, let's let's move on. Right, Paul McComb is up next, and he says, "What about the match commentator?" Kept going on about Rangers during the game. He said Kettlewell is a crispy bun. Uh, commentator for what, John? The Motherwell game. Um, yeah, it was the David uh, Crocker, the usual David Crocker, was it, John? It was a new guy. I've never heard this guy before, but yeah, I wasn't really listening to him, to be honest with you. Um, but if he was mentioning Rangers, then fair enough. That's up to him. Couldn't care less what he mentions. They just waffle on a load of nonsense anyway. I don't think anybody listens to them. But no, there you go. I certainly wasn't listening to him. I listened to Chris Sutton when he's talking. Yeah, I just remember it being somebody different for the usual guy. So that's all I remember, John. Aye, just an English guy, wasn't it? I can't remember his name, but there you go. Thanks for that, Paul. Next up was James Doran. Cheers, Paul. He's it. James says, we don't know how long either will be out with the ankle injury, and we better hope that Kyogo doesn't get injured with important fixtures coming up, including Aberdeen in the Cup at the weekend. Well, there you go, James. Conte Sander, Adam either is good to go. Yeah, I think we were all worried, you know, especially the couple of days after the the tackle, John, and then we were told he was going for a scan. It was just a it was just a worrying time because if he was out injured, probably left with one striker. But I still think we need to sign somebody in January, definitely, John, a new striker. Um, we need we just need that wee bit of extra cover, I think. Definitely, I'd, I'd say sign another striker. That's important to me. Um, no, because. Kyogo and either are bad strikers but because we need a third striker and I think that would put the other two under a lot of pressure but a good quality striker never goes amiss Sander, we could really be doing a good quality striker, especially somebody that can finish from six yards uh, Yeah, I don't know what was wrong with Kyogo in midweek there, John. that's, I don't know if, if his mind was elsewhere or if he just you know, mistimed it, I don't know I just I was celebrating before before he hit the shot. I, I thought that was it. That was the first go- goal because the case was with Dundee, John. We get our first goal, the game's finished. That was the case. That was one. It was one of the games. You get the first goal, the game's over, and uh, that was our chance to to put us up early in that one, John. And uh, because he missed the two open goals, more or less, um, it was a struggle the first half, right up until until uh, ten minutes into the second half. Aye, if Alistair Johnson was on there, he wouldn't have missed him. Yeah, I don't think any many players would have missed that, John. I don't know what was happening to the P man there, but everybody's allowed a miss or two, I suppose, John. Aye, but he's doing it too often, Xander, in too many games. Yeah, just wait to Hamden, John. You'll see a different Kyogo at Hamden. I've no doubt about that because he turns up for the big games. But yeah. if you imagine if he took half of the chances that he gets... And they're all easy chances. But yeah, but his his movement's amazing, isn't it, John? You know, he's he's in that position. You know, as you say, just put it in the net. Uh, you've done all the hard work. You've moved into that position, John. You've done all the hard work. Just put it in the net. That's the easy part. You know, goalkeeper's nowhere. Aye. Oh, he's a great player, Kyogo. I love him. But he's just, there's too many times this season that he's missed these sitters. And it gets you worried because you're going on nothing each, nothing each, nothing each, and you're wondering, is this goal ever going to come? Then he gets a chance and he puts it past the post or blitters it over the bar. Or, um, ah, he's got to start taking these chances. He's getting the chances, but he's not taking them. Yeah. Yeah, it was one of the games that was crying out for either. You know, Kyogo wasn't firing. We needed either on the park. He just wasn't available. So uh, there's not much the manager can do about that, I suppose, John. But that's what that's what it comes back to. January, we've got to get a third striker and another quality striker. Three, got to have three at the club. Aye, aye, I definitely need a third striker. Anyway, let's move on for that. Thanks for that, James. Um, Cheers, James. Next up is Lisbon girl. She says, "I can't believe that every competition past few weeks I've had Adam either to score. Then this time I had Kuhn to score and the right score ends up either scores half a Kuhn assist." Telling you it wasn't for bad luck. 
I'd have no luck. Great show, boys. <laughs> I, you know, John, three nothing against Motherwell. There was a lot of three nils, right? There was there was about ten three nothings, but not one of them got a goal scorer, and there was three goal scorers as well. So. You just need to pick a wee bit more savvy, I suppose. I mean, you're picking a goal scorer. I mean, it's, it's only a choice of three or four, isn't it? Who's your three or four goal scorers? Kuhn, Kyogo, Ida, Maida, and maybe Callum McGregor. You know, apart from that, there's no really, you know, maybe the occasional goal from a corner from a defender, maybe, John. So the hardest part is getting the correct score. There was a lot of people that got it, but it's, the competition's just a wee bit more uh, tougher now. No. Alistair Johnson's climbing up the rank stander for a first goal scorer. It sure is, John. Um, Any time in the game scorer, John. So Alistair Johnson, he's, he's getting into the box, isn't he, John? He really is up further up the park. It doesn't matter who it's against, you know. It doesn't matter. It can be anybody. It doesn't need to be a lower team. It can be Aberdeen, it can be Rangers. He's up that end of the park, John, <laughs> and he's a, he's a good finisher, Alistair Johnson. He certainly is, aye. Um get predator in- instincts in that box, isn't he? Maybe should uh, batter him up for, for a couple of games, <laughs> see how he gets on. He's got the power, he's got the pace, he's got the finish. Yeah, he's got a cross as well, John. What a cross that boy puts into the box. He's fantastic. I love Alistair Johnson. He's, he's no a player that's grown on me. I've loved him for the first time I've seen him playing for Celtic, and he hasn't stopped playing like that since. He's been brilliant every game he's played in, just about. Uh, outstanding, John. What a signing, Alistair Johnson is. Um, I don't know how long a contract he's got at Celtic, but if he's not signed an extension, then get him signed up. Aye, definitely. He seems happy at Celtic as well, doesn't he? Very happy, John. Can he, the guy can't get smell off his face. Oh, he loves it at Celtic, which is good news for us because I'd love to see him sign a new contract, a new five-year deal, keep him there for life. Basically, I'd love him to stay at Celtic. But I uh, anyway, Osman Girl, keep trying, keep trying because uh, that happens a lot. Somebody gets the right score, but they don't get the right player. But uh, just keep having a guess. You never know. So nobody's won it for a few weeks. This could be your week. Could be your day tomorrow if you want a wee tip. Three two Aber- uh, three two no three two Aberdeen, three two Celtic for a correct score. Yeah, yeah there you go. John's giving you that. And by the way, it can be any scorer. So if there's five goals in that game. You've got potentially five scorers to pick from. So, um, yeah, John, 3.5 million Alistair Johnson cost us. That is an absolute bargain from FC Montreal. Aye, and we sold that. What was his name? I forgot that boy's name. Juranovic. Juranovic, aye. Uh, he was not half the player Alistair, Alistair Johnson is. Definitely no, John. He was decent, you know, don't get me wrong, but... Had nowhere near the player that Alistair Johnson is. Uh, so, uh, brilliant bit of business there by um, who was it that signed him? Was it Ange? Went to Ange Postecoglou. Uh, that was an Ange sign, and I see, uh, by the way, I seen Big Ange managed to turn over Man City. Oh, did he? Right, I didn't know that, John. Uh, was that a league game? Cup game? Aye, Wednesday, Wednesday night. Aye, the night Celtic were playing. Uh, Big Ange turned over Man City. Well done, Ange. That's absolutely brilliant. You know, I think Ange's got Rangers coming up on the horizon as well, isn't he? So, um, yeah, the big man, uh, he's doing well down there, isn't he? Big Ange Postecoglou, John. So, um, I'm just looking at that just now, John. Tottenham 2, Manchester City 1 in the English League Cup. Yes, he's knocked Manchester City out of the, out of the cup. Well done, Big Ange. Aye, aye, it's a good result. Uh I didn't watch it right enough. I just seen the, the score when I checked the scores. Um, so I well done, Ange. Yeah, uh, yeah, good manager. Just good crack manager. Just a pity that he's playing in front of Gabby's fans, you know, or the uh, Boyle Sweet Suckers. <laughs> <laughs> well, when uh, when the where's it the song they sing? When the Spurs go marching in. Yeah, I uh, they might have put a lot of thought into that, didn't they? The old when the Spurs <laughs> go marching in. Must have been up all night with that. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. Um, of course. Yeah, well, sorry, John. They've got, he's got Rangers coming up very soon in a few weeks, actually. So, yeah, that'll be interesting as well. I it certainly will. I'm hoping for a, maybe a 7, 8, 9, nothing there. Absolutely, John, because Ange won't stop. You know, he won't stop at 2 or 3. 
I just go to Spurs playing really well. When I did watch the Spurs games, they're fast, they're attacking, great players. Aye, aye. Rangers, uh, they need to do something, uh, I don't know, hope for a miracle to get in anything off of Spurs. But uh, I, I just go, go to Spurs flying. Uh, good luck to them down there. But yeah. uh, the Spurs, Spurs songs, they get a new song when they sign dance, didn't they? Stole right after Celtic fans stole dance, post the Coglu song. Couldn't they think of one yeah. of their own? That's it, John. That's always going to happen. And, you know, uh, good luck to Big Ange. You know, we know he left under a cloud here, you know. Well, not a cloud, but it's a lot of disappointment when he left. But he's a good manager. So, so we've got a... You know, in my opinion, an even better manager in at Celtic now. So good luck to the big man. And Aston Villa, John, the team we play at the end of the Champions League, the last game, um, down there, down at Aston Villa, John, uh, they got beat in midweek in the same tournament. You know, two, just looking at it there, two one, Crystal Palace beat them. So I don't know if that's a case of them resting their players because it's a cup game, John. But it's a defeat for Aston Villa. They've not had many this season, right? Crystal Palace, eh? Big odds and Edward with that big smile on his face. Remember that big smile that's... Guy's never smelled in his life. Suddenly he's showing all his teeth and all that and, you know, he's loving the money that he's got there. Um, nothing to do with signing for Crystal Palace. I mean, who would get that excited about signing for them? Yeah, that's it, John. Um, I was just looking at the scorers. Yeah, he didn't score, so I didn't know if big Edward's still at Crystal Palace, is he? I've, I've, I've not followed his career since he left Celtic, so... Um, no, no, um, Aston Villa, John, it's good to see them getting a wee defeat because, you know, you want them to be in as weak a, a position as possible when we head down there. Because we, we, may we may need to, sorry, go down there and get a point. Well, for wait and see, Xander, there's a long way to go before uh, we play them. A couple of Should months in, I was going to say a few months. It's January. A long time. Yeah, yeah it's a few um, months, John, it's January. Well, well, we'll talk about that when we get to it. Thanks for your comment, by the way, Lisbon Girl. Uh, I know we waffled on a wee bit there, but thanks for that, pal. We yeah, get one of your poems in. And just before you go, John, yeah, Lisbon Girl will get another poem in. Um, I've got a couple of songs from Lisbon Girl as well I want to play, um, but we'll get to that. Uh, Tottenham play Aston Villa on Sunday, John. So there you go. Right, well, I'll maybe watch that. Uh, but then again, Rangers are, Rangers are playing. Depends what time the games are on it. So I'll maybe watch Big Ange. Take, well, take you've, got the, you've got the, the Rangers game on Sunday, is it, John? Uh, Aye. Uh, yeah, it is. And it's at three o'clock and the Tottenham game is at two o'clock. So you can watch it for an hour. Aye. Uh, the Celtic game was 15 minutes before the Rangers game kicked off on Wednesday, by the way, Sander. Yeah. Yeah, that's so, what I switched, switched over at half time, John. I saw the penalty miss. Dreadful. Absolutely dreadful. Ah, uh, uh, Never mind. Anyway, let's go on with the comments. Beautiful yeah. Life, I think that's another new person. Uh, Beautiful Life says uh, he should be banned for that tackle. Disgusting. And then went on to say about Rangers' loss of 17.2 million. Yeah, we'll cover that, John. Um, but the commenters, you know, happy. They're happy with the news that's happening just now. Uh, a lot, a big loss, massive loss for Rangers, John. And uh, this, he, he gets just too much ban. Now this Gordon, Liam Gordon, John, it should have been at least a three-match ban. It really should have, but, you know, they went light on him, John, so he'll be available probably next week at some point. Well, he didn't go light on big either, did he? Anyway, thanks for that beautiful life. Yeah, thanks, pal. Thanks very much. Peter Hendry says, Kettlewell must be on something to come out with those comments. Maybe the load them all. That's a new... <laughs> uh, uh, prescription drug for Rangers fans, Sander. Yeah, John, I think they'll need to um, get an extra load of them into the chemist because, you know, they must be suffering over there, John. You know, you know, I don't really want to talk too much about Rangers fans. You know, we, we're here to talk about the football, but, uh, you know, they must be suffering big time. Uh, I want to talk about the fans. We've gone on about winning the league every single season. Wait till October, wait till this, wait till that. So I delude them all for them. Anyway, thanks for that, Peter. Yeah, cheers, Peter. Keep the comments coming in, pal. Uh, Roseanne was up next. Oh, I forgot. Roseanne had a wee look at Alexander. Uh, I can't remember who it was. Aidan McGeady and... It was a cracker, by the way. An absolute cracker. Aidan McGeady and the guy who the uh, Riverdance. Michael right, Flatley. Is it, is it Michael yeah, Flatley's name? Is? Flatley, that's it, John. Uh, I'll put that up on the screen. That is, that is a good gene. Yeah, that is a good gene. Uh, but 
<laughs> they'd make it his double, isn't it? Actually, it could be it's, his. Uh, tw- it could be his twin. Aye, Michael Flatley, Aidan McGeady, separated twins. That's a cracker, Roseanne. I would never have thought. I didn't know who Michael Flatley was till uh, I heard that one. But I looked it up when Roseanne wrote it, and I it's exactly the same as Aidan McGeady. Exactly the same. Yeah, that was a good one, John. I've got to admit. Um, was it you to put the photo together, John, or was it hard to put it the photo the photo together? I can't remember. Sunday put the photo together anyway, and had a oh, look at it. Or was it you, John? Was it um, I, class, I classic? It I sent it to you a few weeks ago. Uh, sorry, Roseanne, we'll, we'll put that one up on the screen because that was an absolute cracker. That's the best one I've seen. Michael Flatley, Aidan McGeady, absolute classic, Roseanne. Well done. Yeah, well done. Uh, a good a good find, actually. Good find. Classic. Well done, Roseanne. Anyway, let's read Roseanne's comment out. Roseanne says, I was completely confident on Sunday, even though all the cheating still going on. Shameful. I'm completely confident for Wednesday as well. And what else did she say? Some good news about that lot over the road. I hope they have not a penny left. I don't think they have, Roseanne. I I think uh, I can see administration number two coming up. Well, Roseanne says, I hope they've not got a penny left. And I've had a penny to begin with. You know, it's other people's money they've been spending, John. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, I can see, John, in all seriousness, I can see them going into administration ag- again because um, the results are terrible. They're going to have to get a new manager that's going to cost them millions. They're going to have to sign new players that's going to cost them millions, John. They're just going to go deeper and deeper and, uh, you know, debt. So, you know, that's their affairs, John. That's up to them. But they, they're just, it's just a club in total mismanagement. Like I say, is keep it coming. Yeah. Don't, don't really care. The further down the, down the drain they go, the happier I am. It's as simple as that. Um, I don't know if probably most Celtic fans feel that way. Every Celtic fan wants liquidation number two. Rosanna again, she says, Kettlewell started off speaking normal and gradually worked up to a frenzy. He knows he's a rubbish manager. Total loser. Yeah, yeah. Um, hopefully he's not a loser at the weekend against Rangers. You know that's, you know, hopefully he can he can do his every favour. You know, instead of you know spouting his nonsense after the Celtic game, go out there, go out there and do a professional job against Rangers. That's all I'll say on that, John. Thanks for the comment, Roseanne. Thanks, Roseanne. Next up was Peter Henry. Peter says uh, Taylor still not signed a new contract, and will be able to open talks with other clubs in January. Is the wee man looking for money? Yeah, it looks that way, John. I don't know if he's looking for money, but you know, you you don't know what the offer was from Celtic. It could it could be either sides, you know, that's causing the delay here. I think you know, I didn't know if there's been a contract offered to Taylor. I don't know. Nothing's been out in the press about it. Um, but just the bottom line is, get the wee man signed up. He's he's a really decent left back. I I I'd like to Greg Taylor to stay. I like him. I think he's the best left back at Celtic anyway. But. Uh... I, I'd love him to sign a new contract, but I don't know what the delay is. So we'll wait and we'll just need to keep our eyes open, Peter, and see what happens there. But me personally, I think he's the best left back at Celtic. Yeah, he is. Uh, but Alex Valley is improving as well, John. So it's, it's going to be a tough one that between Valley and, and Taylor because, you know, there's no much between them, John, to be honest with you. There isn't much. You know, I've seen big improvements on Alex Valley. Uh, and me, Greg, never had his best game against Motherwell, uh, against Dundee, sorry. So um, it's just good to have a choice, I suppose. It's good to have a, a choice of left back there, John. Aye, I'll be Greg was injured for a while, so that's probably why he never had his best game. I thought he was okay, actually. But aye, it's good to have a choice. It's always good to have a choice in every position on the park. Thankfully, we have got that. But anyway, thanks for that, Peter. And uh, yeah, I was going done. to read this. I was going to read this last comment, but I, I honestly don't know what the guy's saying, Sander. I'll yeah, give you a shout. I'll yeah, give yeah. you a shout. I'll read it out, but I don't know what he's saying. With your app, nee, that's A P N E. I don't know what that's meant to me. M- meant to mean, sorry. With or with your app, nee, he is better than you. Don't try to break his ankle. I don't know what that means. Yeah, just making a comment about the game, isn't it? Uh, tackle, the shocking tackle. I don't know what it means either, to be honest with you. Um, but yeah, Sorry, Rab. If you are not like uh, Xander, Rabcar, you have sausage fingers, you know what I mean? Like like Xander, 
maybe that's what the problem is. You've t- <laughs> typed in a couple of ring letters. <laughs> <laughs> that's it, John. It's uh, it's no easy that when you when you've got predictive text as well. That doesn't help. And by the way, um, there's so many spelling police out there, John. I put a video on Facebook, and I think there was no even that, it was one letter was wrong, right? Obviously, it's just a typo. And uh, three or four Celtic supporters as well, you know, uh, coming on and slating me for it. You know, unbelievable. You're not allowed to make a typo. Um, you know, predictive, predictive text is great, but when it goes wrong, it goes wrong. You've not got the time to check every single word. Anyway, uh, yeah, John, it was a shocker. I think that's what the comment are saying. It's just a shocking tackle. And he did try and break his ankle. John, that's that's the way I look at it. I think there's intent there to cause Adam Eda damage. I um well, it says better than you don't try to break his ankle. I, I don't know what, what you mean, Rob, to be honest with you. I've got a couple of wee typos in there, wee, wee spelling mistakes, mate, so I can't uh, really make it out what, what you're trying to say. But if you mean he was trying to break his ankle, absolutely he was trying to break his ankle, 100%. That was, that was a disgusting tackle, that. Two feet off the ground, right into his ankle. You see the whole ankle, ankle twisting. I, to me, that was worthy of a longer uh, ban than two matches, Sander. That was an absolute shocker. Why the worst I've seen? Of course it was, John. Uh, disgusting. <laughs> but, I mean, words kind of describe that in a football field, John. Disgusting doesn't cover it. Um, all right, John, we'll say the piece on it anyway, John. Have you any more comments? No, there's a couple more, but it's just uh, score predictions. Um by Kettlewell seemed to think it was a good tackle, you know, wasn't even worthy of a yellow card. He still no came out and corrected that. Of course he hasn't, Jordan. He won't. You know, he's uh, he's, he's, he's trying to defend his player, isn't he? But you can't defend, it's undefendable. You can't defend that. You can't defend an animalistic tackle like that. It's, um, uh, anyway, well, John. Well, well, Halliday came out and, and says it was a send and half. That's one of his own players. Even Halliday says oh, well, it's a bad tackle, it's a, it's a red card all day. So why can he not come in and say that? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> how much more proof do you need, John? He's got his ban, he's had his red cards, you know, and he still came out and, and he's not slated the player for it, you know. Just a poor manager. That's the way I look at it. That's kettle well for oh. you, John. Oh, he's probably patting him on the back. Yeah, of course he is. Um, all right, John, let's wrap it up then. You want to run through a couple of predictions, John, with, with the commenters are saying? Uh, no, it's predictions for uh, the last game, Xander. There might be predictions on a, another video somewhere, but this is from the... What video was that again? Uh, Big match preview against Dundee. So this was Wednesday af- afternoon's video, Xander. So... Right. Oh, okay, John. No bother. Um, okay, speaking of the predictions, then get your, get your comments into the... Your guesses, sorry, into the comments for the competition, folks, because we need to get a winner. We've not had one for three weeks, so get get the guesses in. Um, tell your pals to get guesses in as well, because we want to try and give a couple of these prizes away. Um, all right, good luck to Celtic on Saturday and the semi final against Aberdeen. Good luck to Motherwell in the semi final on Sunday. Um, we'll wrap it up there, John, unless you've got any wee final words to say. No, just the usual, just to talk about how big this game is. Um, more importantly, I think it's about showing Aberdeen who's top dog, Xander. I think that's what it's about for me. It's about showing them who the top dog is, show them how good we are, and show them what a big, big challenge they've got to win the league. So that's all I can say about Aberdeen right now. Okay, John, fair dues. Okay. Um, it's going to be an interesting weekend. It really is. Uh, starting on Saturday night, a funny kickoff time, five, half past five. Um, we'll, we'll all be watching it. Um, we'll all be looking at, looking forward to it. Um, as long as we're into the, the final, John, doesn't matter what the result is. As long as we're into that final, that that's all we're looking for. So, um, we'll catch you on the next podcast, John. Um, we'll do a wee uh, post match podcast probably on Sunday. Um, and we'll catch you on Sunday, John, for the post match. I'll speak to you Sunday, Xander. Hell, hell, mate.